All right. All right, everyone. This is the commentary for this thing. Um, this is Trey Parker. Uh, hi, Matt Stone. Can't wait to get into another round of exciting commentary minis. Yeah. Um, as we have on other uh, DVDs, we, we don't really believe in doing commentary over the entire thing because who wants to hear us talk for that long besides ourselves? And um, so we like to do what we call bite size commentary, or actually this is more fun size commentary. <laughs> which will be uh, a bit shorter. But um, we're doing we'll lunch- a little commentary bit about lunchables. Episode. Yeah. <laughs> so in this shot, really what we were going for was the innocence of childhood. And you can see that we put five trees behind the boys and two trees behind the shot with Cartman. We believed that seven trees best represented the innocence of a child. That's true. That's true. This was actually the first episode of the uh, fourth, of the run, fourth season. Yeah, which was only like four episodes long. Actually, it was <laughs> in the spring. This is when we were doing kind of like four episodes here and five episodes there, and uh, but this was the first episode of the year 2000, which is why it's called Tooth Fairy's Tats 2000 because we just everything was about you know, as soon as the new year started, it was like this 2000 and that 2000. Yeah. So we just decided to call every episode whatever it was. In the we didn't end up doing it. Yeah, we ended up doing it just for four episodes. We were going to do it all year, but then it did and it kind of lose its luster. But uh, this episode has the glorious uh, here distinction of being the first episode that Timmy was in. And here's right here. Timmy. This, this was, uh, yeah. This is all that, this is in this episode, it was just this joke that Kenny needed to get his tooth pulled out and Kenny, or and Timmy was going to be, you know, with his old wheelchair was going to be We were just thinking, okay, how, what's a funny just way we can, have, we can have Kenny's tooth be pulled out? And we came up with, oh, let's have it like be a little handicapped kid in a wheelchair. And this was a big fight with the network, this scene. Yeah, Comedy big Central fight. was like, no way, no way. You so cannot we, do a kid in a wheelchair. So we had this big fight with him saying that, look, you know, and our defense, you know, our defense was, and it still is with, with Timmy and people who have problems with characters like that, is we think, we think of Timmy and the boys think of Timmy as a full-fledged human being. And he's not bummed out, and they're not, they're not ripping on him for... His disability, and he's just part of he's just part of the the fun, really. You know, he's just part of the world like everyone else is. Yeah. Instead of like everyone wanting to sort of, without sounding too philosophical, with you know, instead of everyone just sort of liking to ignore handicapped people, it's like it's for us it was better to just make him a character. Right. So we finally won the fight, and I remember there were all these notes going back and forth from the network saying, "Okay, well, like a little less and a little more just Timmy," and it was just like. Uh, <laughs> You know, we, we kept going back and forth, but what happened, of course, was that Timmy was uh, a big hit in the episode. And No, what happened is actually is that we decided we wanted to do the next episode. We wanted it to be all Timmy before this had aired. Oh, actually, right. just before this had aired. Yeah. And then we had to convince the, uh, the, the, uh, the network that we wanted to do not just one little joke or one little scene, but a whole episode, which is coming up later on your wonderful DVD. Um, but then Timmy became a huge sensation. Yeah. And then... Within a day, literally, Comedy Central was like, we need more Timmy, guys. Do you want to do more Timmy episodes? Can we get some more Timmy shirts and Timmy crap to sell? And it was pretty weird for us because it, like, all the way up until then, you know, whatever this was, like our second year or third year, it was like everywhere we went, it was always like, oh, you killed Kenny or, you know, ah, kick you in the nuts or something. And then all of a sudden, everywhere we went, it was Timmy, Timmy, everyone screaming Timmy at us, which was cool. It was not a nice little revival for us. Do you know that um, this is the episode that Richard Belzer's in, right? Isn't it? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. And what was, how did we get, wasn't it something where, where we had his picture and instead we used Charlie Sheen? It was something we did for something. I can't even remember. But anyway, the reason why he's in this episode is because we used him in like an MTV Movie Award thing. Remember we did a Who Died This Year? Oh, yeah. And we used Charlie Sheen instead of Richard Belzer. After we had promised Richard Belzer, we'd use his photo. <laughs> and he was, he was a huge fan and he was totally cool. And he was like, well, let me do a voice. Yeah, that's right. And so he does the, like the, the mafia kid's voice in this. He does a great job, actually. Yeah. It's really cool. But what's um, really funny, if you notice, in our usual way of how we, you know, are always finishing the show Tuesday morning before it airs, uh, you'll notice that at the very end, the, his character's voice changes a little bit, and that's because it's me doing it, because we couldn't get that's Richard right. Belzer to come in at four in the morning and do all the new lines. So. And this is the one where, this is the one where Kyle has the, just a big trip out sequence at the end. Yeah. With Primus. Yeah. Yeah. That was kind of a weird end to a show. We <laughs> just kind of said, all right, now everything's a big weird trip this was in the still in the seasons where we thought we needed a sea story this is before like 
Yeah. Like lately, uh, you know, we we just do an A story. We f first thought you had to have like an A story, a B story, a C story, you know, all in 20 minutes. And so trying to service all that makes the shows not as good. I think. Yeah, it's better when you just when you bite off less. As in a commentary mini. Yeah, but my favorite scene in this show is is the the scene at the dentist where they're talking about the giant squirrel or whatever. That's yeah. like <laughs> the chicken or <laughs> yeah, the squirrel, yeah, the, yeah. Like, squirrel chicken. <laughs> But uh, I, anyway, that's plenty for this uh, episode because yeah. we don't want people to be thinking that we we're going to burn this out. long on every episode. How much was that? Six so. minutes? Oh, oh my geez, God. Wow. That's almost a we're commentary sorry. maxi. We're sorry. We will, we will not talk that long again. So this episode was called uh, Cartman's Silly Hate Crime, which was sort of our statement show against hate crime legislation. Which we thought was silly. Yeah. We still think that's kind of silly. But um, part of this, I remember this was right after... Oh, yeah, this was right after we had gone to the Academy Awards, actually, and it was, right? uh, yeah, which is why we made it Phil Collins Hill was because, oh, yeah. basically, I had just lost the Academy Award to Phil Collins, and I didn't <laughs> take it well, because I was, I was fully ready to lose the Academy Award for best song, but just not to Phil Collins. That just really mm. bummed me out. It's a bummer to be beaten by Phil Collins at anything in life. Yeah. But, uh... This episode um, might have been the first episode, or at least one of the first episodes, to feature the voice of Token, which was played by uh, our our storyboard, our head of our storyboard department, Adrian, just because he was the only black guy we had in the building at the time. So we said, well, I guess you have to be Token, dude. Yeah, it only made sense to use him. It didn't really make sense. Me, me and Trey couldn't get the right, I don't know, inflection, the right feel. Needed a black person. That's funny right there. But I think my favorite part of this episode is... Uh, when Cartman starts pulling Disneyland out of his ass at the end. <laughs> <laughs> that was just sort of one of those things that the network couldn't even really give us notes on because they just didn't understand it. Cause we, we were really, either. actually, we were really surprised that they would let us do that because Disney is so, so uh, hardcore about suing people. Yeah. It's really hard to use Disney kind of stuff in a show and, and get away with it, and they let us do it. Yeah. Nothing I remember that about this episode is when Cartman gets sentenced and he gets sent to the juvenile detention center the music that plays is an homage to oz it is the music from oz actually is it exactly <laughs> yeah. music from oz? yeah no, because I think I, we didn't know no yeah no because ann sent it out and actually oh. the people that did oz were big fans and said yeah you can use our music so it's the exact thing oh so it's so it's, it's more than an homage yeah. and right here you'll see right right here you'll see how much care we take in the voices you'll see here that's trey and then the other guy on the on the frame left FBI guy is me, and then at the end of the scene, it's Trey again. You'll see. That's me. That's me. Okay, so that voice goes with that guy, and then right here, you'll see. That's Trey. Yeah. That's terrible. You know that we we probably do that at least every other show, <laughs> where voices just change randomly. And just because we just don't give it crap. <laughs> That's really terrible. But, uh, yeah, that's probably uh, plenty about this episode, actually. So we'll, we'll move right along. To more commentary minis. So this was the episode we did after we had done the Tooth Fairy show where we just done that little scene with Timmy, the handicapped kid. And we just loved that scene so much that we said, let's, let's, do, a whole, uh, let's do a whole show with that kid. Yep. So a whole show with Timmy. The network didn't like it too much, but I don't can't remember how we sold it to him. Would just I think we j basically just said, well, we don't have any other thing this for this week, so it's either Timmy or nothing. <laughs> we don't have any other ideas. So they went with Timmy. <laughs> but uh, but it went over huge, and next thing we knew, Timmy was sort of the most popular character on the show. In this show, I remember um, Isaac Hayes loved this show because it uh, it kind of, we do this whole thing with ADD and Ritalin, and Scientology is actually, they have one of their big programs is against Ritalin use with kids. I don't know why, but they're really actively against Ritalin. Ritalin stops Scientology? N no, they they really they the Scientologists run programs to to keep kids off of Ritalin. They think oh. it's like well, see, they do, weird, do which, one good thing. They do <laughs> for all the goofy stuff. They, 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 they <laughs> all the goofy stuff we believe. Every once in a while, there's a gem. Oh, even a fool's right once in a while. It's like the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so. It, this episode was um, was funny about this too was that we decided once again to have Phil Collins on it because like it was pretty juvenile of, of us to put Phil Collins in an episode before this make it Phil Collins Hill because we had lost to him at the Academy Awards and then it was super juvenile to, to do it again the next week it was I mean, just it was, downright lame it was just downright immature 
So that we thought that was sweet. And we actually, <laughs> at the end of this, have him with an Oscar stuffed up his ass. And once again, if it would have been anyone else, it, we wouldn't have done it. It's just Phil Collins. <laughs> 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 and uh, this was also, I remember this was, uh, we had fun bringing, heating the band equipment back up again to do Timmy's song. Yeah, when we actually cut a CD, remember? The, we actually yeah. put out a, a CD, a small run of CDs with Timmy and the Lords of the Underworld. Um, it wasn't a huge chart smash. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't a chart topper. Timmy became difficult because it is it is extremely difficult to write entire shows around a character that can only say their own name. But we keep coming up with these prop characters like Kenny and Timmy that you can't really do stories about, and then we'd insist on doing a whole story about them, and it's almost impossible to do because they can't talk. It's tough. But Timmy's great. Yeah. And we go, we, uh, we're we into challenging storytelling. Yeah. And speaking of challenging storytelling... I think we're going to move right along to the next episode. So this episode is called Contorting Quintuplets, and it's actually one of the perfect examples of how we do things here at South Park because uh, I remember this episode, because it was the fourth one, we had no idea what it was going to be the Thursday before it aired. And we had this, the only idea we had was like, let's have quintuplets move in. Well, I think we just seen a Cirque du Soleil, too. Yeah, but it was we're like, like no, 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 because remember, first it was quintuplets because we actually did an ad where the girls were talking just in normal voices. Oh, yeah, that's right. And they were sitting there without accents or anything, and it was like, the boys meet, you know, <laughs> quintuplets. And it had, we just had, like, a whole commercial that went out on Friday that was, like, just the girls talking. And then, of course, none of that ended up in the show because by Friday we had decided, oh, let's have them be part of Cirque du Soleil, and they're actually from Romania. And right, then we right. changed it all. But the other perfect example was because it got to be Sunday morning, and it's happened so many times in South Park, it was Sunday morning, and we kind of had half a show and no idea where to go with it or what to do. And it was Easter, right? Or it was right around Easter when yeah. the Elian Gonzalez thing happened. Yeah. And the whole thing with that kid, with that Elian Gonzalez kid happened, and um, and we just watched the news that morning, and then we're like, let's just do that. Yeah. And we, we just basically... Come in and we had, yeah, we had the storyline where they were from Romania and trying to defect, which is basically Elian Gonzalez from Cuba, and we said, let's just make that the show. Yeah. And so we sort of tweaked and changed the whole show and then added this scene where, just like the images everyone had seen on TV on Sunday, the uh, Janet Reno came in in a bunny outfit and got the and, and opened the closet on Stan. And it was the first time that sort of the people that were watching were really shocked at, like, how the hell did they do that? Because right. it was for an animated show to do something that basically had just happened two days before, people were just... They it thought, might have been a record. We might have broken some kind of record. I think no one gives us credit for that, but I think we did break that record. And pretty soon, obviously, all animated shows will be able to do that, but I think we All animated out. shows could do it now if they yeah. just got their shit together and worked hard like we do. <laughs> Sitting around, picking their ass. We work hard. That's the point. Yeah. <laughs> that's why we're doing the fucking show on the show's Wednesday. We're doing it on Sunday because <laughs> we work so hard. <laughs> I can work hard. We do. It's just funny. We put everything off. <laughs> we work really hard. Yeah. We well, we've done it a few times since, but this this did this was the first one where like it aired on Wednesday and Thursday morning. The phone started ringing literally from yeah. you know newspapers and Same people just going, that. okay, what what the hell was that? How yeah. you know did you just do that one shot? And actually, we didn't do just that one shot. I mean, we really added that whole scene and yeah, you know, I mean, we're able to do that. I mean, we needed something. We only had 15 minutes of show, yeah. so we, <laughs> we had to put six or seven more minutes of stuff together. And, you know. And this really, this part, I mean, I, I really have a love-hate relationship with Cirque du Soleil because I, I do think they're really cool, but you do feel like a big fag sitting there watching. <laughs> it's pretty rough. <laughs> it's all just, a, it's a perfect, it's just the perfect thing because it's basically just the Beijing circus, yeah. but repackaged in a faggy French way to make, yeah. you, to make you like it. But it's still pretty cool to watch. Yeah, that's cool, I guess. The music's kind of rough. Yeah. But, um, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't think we have anything else to say about this episode that would be interesting. I think we should just stop right now. Yeah. Let's go practice. So then we entered into this run of shows that we did basically in the summer, sort of like June, July-ish. And uh, the thing I remember about this season was, Bill Curtis. <laughs> was just sort of like um, before every run of shows, whether it's four episodes or now they're longer, seven and eight, but we have what we call a writer's retreat where we like get you know our basically our friends together and we just go somewhere in the country and hang out and come up with just sort of broad stroke ideas for shows and sort of and like, drink let's do a show about this and let's do a show about that but really it's just an excuse to go and party on other people's money but i remember that the retreat for this run of shows 
we actually got on a cruise that went to Ensenada, Mexico. <laughs> and we really thought, like, that'll be sweet because we'll be kind of, like, trapped on a boat and we'll get, like, a lot of work done. Instead, we were just trapped on a boat. And we were just trapped on And just the scummiest, like, just, you know, pools and whirlpools filled with pee. Just, like, it was just the biggest, like, <laughs> frat party, like, horrible thing down to, you know, the biggest shithole in the world, Ensenada, Mexico. It was a booze cruise. I don't know what the hell we were thinking, but... um, At least the food was terrible. Yeah. The drinks were totally shitty. People would come up to us on the boat and be like, hey, are you Matt and Trey from South Park? And we're like, yeah, we are. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing on this cheap-ass cruise? Because, yeah, it was, like a, it was like a fucking $300 cruise, too. Can't you guys afford something better? Like, yeah, why, why are we on this yeah, cheap-ass cruise? And it was only because Ensenada was the only place we could go that was, like, short enough. Otherwise, we'd be gone for, you know, 10 or 12 days. <laughs> the other thing I remember about this episode is is a lot of people, we were concerned, and I think, I think it was a just concern. It seems like the concept of NAMBLA, the North American Man-Boy Love Association, that we must have made that up. Yeah. And we always come, I mean, when you, ever, you tackle something that's just so extreme and weird like NAMBLA, you run into that problem where this episode's funny if you know NAMBLA is real, and if you think we made up NAMBLA, it's not as funny. But I think most people know about NAMBLA. But I remember that was a big yeah. concern going into this episode, is really trying to make people know, like, sometimes yeah, we, we feel like doing that in an episode, we feel like just saying to people, no, 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 no joke, stop the show, this is real. This really exists. Now watch the show again. Of course, you can't do that. So, <laughs> But NAMBLA is one of those things. But this was also basically in the soap opera world of South Park, I remember. I think this was why Car- or, uh, Garrison gets arrested in this show for being the guy that Cartman's trying to meet later on. Yep. And from being arrested, he gets fired from being a teacher, which much later in the next season will come into play because uh, Garrison's out and the new teacher's brought in. Is that right? Yeah. Is this where it starts? And Garrison's off in the woods somewhere, like, uh, being a hermit. I like the end of this episode, too. We did a, f- a French farce kind of stupid... Yeah, but we took a song outdoors. from some French dude. What's that guy's name? Uh, I, don't know, whatever. I can't remember. Did John Francois, whatever. Who cares? See, it's starting to get boring. So I think we'll quit there, and we'll move on to the next episode. Uh, move on to the next commentary mini. Good morning, children. Mr. Garrison is away today. I am your substitute teacher, Mr. Wyland. Oh, sweet, your substitute teacher. Now, I understand that some students in this class like to mess with substitute teachers. But if we oh, right. Pay, this is... <laughs> okay, <laughs> just go from there. This is Cherokee Hair Tampons. I remember now because uh, this was when uh, one of our writers was doing, actually, a, a uh, what, like, cayenne pepper and lemon juice uh Oh, yeah, she was getting rid of all the toxins in her body. Yeah. She was doing a special diet. And I remember thing. Matt yelling at her and saying, what is a toxin? And she was going, you know, the toxins you have to get out of your body. He's like, where, what, but what is it? And, of course, she couldn't answer that. But, <laughs> um, so it was just sort of our response to, uh, to New Age. But the cool thing about this episode is we got Cheech and Chong to do it. And it was like the first thing they'd done together in, like, years and years and years. Yeah, it was the first thing they'd done together in years. And actually... We we contacted each of their agents or managers, and we told them exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted it to be Cheech and Chong playing these two Mexican guys who were who were you know who who were tr- pretending to be Native Americans, and both their managers and, and we were really upfront about what it was. And then we, we actually recorded them. I think you were on the phone with Cheech, or who was on the phone with Cheech? I don't remember. I just they wouldn't do it together. Though. They, well, they weren't in the same city. Right. No, and I was on the phone with one, and Trey was on the phone with the other. And both of them were like, who's going to play the other guy? Yeah. And it was like, oh, Cheech is going to be the other guy. And Tommy Chong's like, oh, really? That's cool. And it was like, but first it was like, know. oh, Cheech won't do it. And we're like, yeah. no, he said he'd do it. And they're like, really? And it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, Chong came by the office. That's yeah. right. But all, both of them were, to- it was weird because both of them were totally open to doing it, but neither one of them knew that the other one was totally open to doing <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. But we were told, I don't know, it was strange. But it, it's pretty, it's pretty cool because uh, it was the first thing they'd done in a long time. And now I think they're doing a new... Now they're all together. I think they're doing something. Yeah, now they're doing stuff, which is good. And this also, this episode, just as importantly, features the voice of our sound guy, Bruce Howell, as the substitute teacher, who does a brilliant job. Because this is where we had, uh, at this point, uh, Garrison was... uh, had been arrested for... uh, or, yeah, had been arrested in in the show before that where, where he tried to have sex with Cartman. And so now in the continuing saga of his teaching, he goes off to try to be a novelist, but he can only write about penises. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really Garrison discovering that he's gay. Yeah, because Garrison I mean, still is in denial here that he's, unlike now, where now in the show he's fully out. 
with and, Mr. Slade. And then this show also has, uh, we've done this a few times in the show, and we don't do it anymore because it's really hard and takes a lot of our time and we're li more lazy now. But we used to do live action commercials every once in a while. And we did one for Cherokee Hair Tampons, and it features our other sound person, Lydia. She's the one who the they pour the, she's the one whose hair is as absorbent as a tampon. <laughs> <laughs> and this was weird is Lydia actually in real life has very absorbent hair. <laughs> We've noticed. <laughs> really? <laughs> she got hate mail? She got hate mail. From what? Native American groups or something? Oh, wow. All right. Betraying your people? Uh, well, that, well, I'm sorry. We've rambled on way too long on this episode. <laughs> we'll, we'll see you on the next you all, one. Y'all know enough about this episode? All right. So this was called Chef Goes Nanners, and it was based on what was going on at the time was that it was South Carolina, right? I think it was South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. they had their big flag debate was going on and whether to change their flag, and so we decided to uh, to do that in South Park. Yeah, but the flag we did in here was a little bit, a little bit more extreme. It wasn't quite what the South Carolina flag <laughs> looked like. <laughs> The only thing I really remember about this episode was that there was something about it being, it was right around 4th of July, remember, that it that we were doing it? Yeah. And it was like, we just bailed on the, like, we, it was 4th of July was the day we were supposed to be finishing it. We all wanted to go see fireworks. We, everyone wanted to go see like, fireworks. <laughs> we work every 4th of July, and we always work till too late, and everyone misses fireworks, and this year we were like, okay, we're getting out of here in time to see fireworks. Yeah. And so we all kind of left. And it was just the very end. But I remember that the, the very end, we were just like, oh, my God. We just threw something together and tagged it on. But it kind of it kind of makes sense, I, I think. I think, it's, it's, again. I think it's pretty good. <laughs> I like it. And uh, I also like the Ku Klux Klan part of this show. Yeah. I like when they, the Ku Klux Klan gets together at one point and they do um, who's got the funniest thing on under their robe, which is actually a thing we actually saw the Klan does. We saw it at the last Klan rally we were at. Yeah. It's, it's good stuff for down in Arizona, the Klan rally. <laughs> Um, and this is also an episode where Cartman and, and uh, Wendy have their kind of forbidden weird love. Oh, thing. yeah, we did. Oh, remember? We, actually, the very ending we had thought of before, we thought it was sweet, where Wendy's like, oh, in that, we, you know, it was just because we work together, and of course we don't really like each other, and just walks away, and the Cartman's oh, just yeah. left there standing oh, yeah, alone. Yeah. And he just kind of, it's like this big bummer of an ending where <laughs> Cartman's actually, like, he really did like her, but kind of walks off sadly and then that's the end of the show it's yeah. pretty sweet it was like a downer ending yeah. it was one of the first times we ever did that we've done that a couple other times but it was kind of cool added some weight to the show yeah you know some much needed weight um, but, uh, yeah. that, this was like this yeah. was one of the episodes that we just buzzed through and looking back it's a lot better than I remember thinking it was at the time yeah it this was about the time and it was actually sort of in the next couple shows we really figured it out but this was right about where we started going Oh, you know, a show can really just be about one thing. Like, we were still in our right. A story, B story, C story mode. And then try to shoehorn them together. And then actually with Finger Bang, which is coming up soon, with Finger Bang, we kind of, we just did one story, and we're like, you know, that works so much better, and then and that's the formula we followed ever since. And South Park, we think, has gotten much better because of that, because we don't try to service all these little stories all the time. Uh, yeah, exactly. But that's enough about that. That's I'm enough about I'm this. sorry. I'm that's sorry. Tonight, so, uh, so, yeah, this was our Finger Bang episode. And uh, this, is our, this is our boy band episode. I remember when we were in college, we actually wanted to start a nam band named Finger Bang. Remember that? <laughs> I think we did. I think, yeah, we lasted about a day. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this was our show that we, we finally sort of figured out, like, oh, just do one story. And actually, this was also uh, the, uh, one of the two times on South Park, South Park so far that we've gotten away with saying cunt. Yeah. On television. And that's a uh, big deal. Yeah, because Wendy, Wendy in the song says uh, uh, that's because she's a cunt contaminated water. <laughs> it's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other time, they, they let us get away with that, but they did. Yeah, no, I'm, I think that's horrible, actually. I, I was sure they would have beeped it out, and then they, it aired, and they didn't beep it, and I was really offended. <laughs> and this episode also features the voice of one of our friends uh, named Marcus Vaughn. Who's the guy who's the uh, mall manager who's like, what? Who? Who pretty much talks like that. And uh, pretty it's much pretty much based on Marcus. Marcus <laughs> actually talks like that as a person. You're like, hey, Marcus, what are you doing? Who? It's like, you. Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> How are what you? What time is it, Marcus? Who? Big stupid. That's all dumb. Yeah. And he just kind of talks like that. Which is, we could have, I guess, just done an impersonation of Marcus. I think we very, yeah. sounded the same. But he did a good job. Yeah. But uh, this is also one of the many episodes we've had Cartman beat... Um, Influenced by wanting to make one million and then ten million dollars. Yeah, and it always seems to work. It's sort of oh it, yeah. It actually, this this episode did kick off a because remember it was this and it was like Cartman Land and there were all the ones that came up where it was this sort of 
six months or a year where like half the shows were based on Cartman wanting to get $10 million. Yeah, and I think it's a Roadrunner kind of thing where you could just have a show about Cartman wanting to make a million dollars and just have every episode start that way. Yeah. And I think it'd be funny. And actually, we're thinking about really beefing spice, uh, South Park up this season and have him want $10 billion. Yeah, or he's going to, yeah, that's right. We talked about he finds out that there's this thing called billion. Yeah, which he never knew. <laughs> which he never knew. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what else happens in the show? Well, this is the show. I mean, it's about one thing, the boys starting a boy band. But then we realized you can have different stories. that Different emotions. Emotional it. stories, you know, like um, Stan's dad right here who we find out has some weird hang-up with a boys band that then reveals itself in a backstory. Yeah, which but, is pretty sweet because he was in a boy band. Right, and so we figured out it's not, it is really one story and then different people's reaction to it instead of just starting three different stories and then trying to have them collide in the end. So we really kind of figured that out. It was yeah. really kind of like... Oh, and you know what is actually really interesting about this show? It, uh, you oh, know what? We've talked way too much about this yeah, show. We well, should just... We should we'll just let start. you guys... We'll let you guys just watch it. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so this was called Do the Handicapped Go to Hell? Which was basically a question we'd asked ourselves many times. We'd asked Anne. Oh, that's right. Because Anne, the producer on the show, it was... Uh, she's Catholic. And she's actually in this episode. Anne Garofino. She plays the nun... Because she was the only Catholic we actually knew, so we yeah. had to have her play it. But what the question was, is do they go to hell? Why was it exactly? Well, because certain things go to purgatory, because like babies go to purgatory. But it's you because know, they like, can't accept Jesus Christ, it's because they don't understand or Yeah. Something? It was like, Which well, like, what if they don't understand? Do they still right. go to hell? Yeah. And by, by strict scripture reading, they do. Go to hell. They go to hell. Right. Yeah. And we thought that that was a, uh, pretty cool actually pretty funny. But this was also the first time we had gone to back to visit hell since the movie, since South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. And it was basically just because we we liked the character so much of Saddam and Satan that we, we sort of wanted to bring him back. And we're like, well, yeah, but Saddam died at the end of the movie. And it's like, well, we can't with like, yeah, but where is he going to go, Detroit? And yeah. <laughs> and it ends up being about 18 people say that in this show. <laughs> and this show was also the first two-parter we did. It's well, been, since, since the... Since uh, the uh, the first season. Right. Thing. But that was like, this was the first two part that was like one week after another. Right. But it, this was an honest, true two parter in that we got into the show and by about Sunday before it was going to air, we were like, there's way too much here. We can't possibly squeeze it all down into 20 minutes. Let's just make it two parts. Yep. And so we did. And uh, this is our first sort of glimpse at uh, Luau parties in hell, and which came from uh, my, my favorite song. I, I love old Hawaiian sort of post-World War II music, and uh, Hookie Lao is my favorite one. And here it is. <laughs> I love those little um, demon, black little cut-out demon guys. Yeah. There's Jer Bear. And it's pretty funny because this, you know, it's obviously just video lava footage in the background to try to make it look like... <laughs> like <laughs> it's so shitty. So shitty. <laughs> it's so super shitty. But um, we got in a... This was also... We got in a big fight with the standards people about putting JFK Jr. in there. Oh, yeah. Or that like, was a you Christmas can't have episode. him there. And it's like, oh, no, well, that why can't you have anyone there? And that was the Christmas classics episode. Oh, that's right, that's right. So now we had, now we had, we had won. But we also had um, Dion Bahar do a voice for this again. Yeah, that's right. The voice of Chris, Satan's new boyfriend, who's a wuss. And uh, I think the storyline with Chris and Satan and Saddam is great. It's Because uh, it's something everyone can relate to. It's kind of like there's the... The person that's bad for you, but you just are so super attracted to, and then the the person who's so good to you that's just such a puss. Right, but you know that they're the you know they're who you should be with. Yeah, but it's it was just like I, I just think this storyline is really a solid soap opera storyline, but it's just a fucked up what's going on, and it's also good because by the end of the episode, Cartman's basically turned into a uh, David Koresh guy. Oh yeah, <laughs> there's this Hummel collection. Yeah, Trey's mom actually has a bunch of Hummels. There, there's Dean right there. <laughs> so that's it. We'll see you on the second part of this. All right, bye bye. Previously on South Park, today we are going to talk about. So yeah, this was the um. We decided, you know, we we'd never done this before, really, where the week before we had started a story and now we we're gonna finish it. So we had to do the typical, let everyone know what had happened. But then we just sort of randomly added in, didn't we? <laughs> That's my favorite shot of the building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
we just we had, put on uh, we put it the, the Fonzie because we it was always on like Happy Days that was always continued. Yeah, this thing was always continued right. the next week, and yeah. it was like he was gonna jump the shark basically. <laughs> yeah, and then they catch the preacher, and all the kids lose their faith. And right here, and that's the setup. And then they, is he gonna make it? <laughs> and so this show, like so many in this sort of year, the whole thing ends up being that Cartman wanted ten million dollars. Right, exactly. And, and he actually had been planning it all along. But somewhere along the line, um, Cartman got this weird affinity towards like southern baptist accents anyway and i yeah. think it was just like the authority thing of respect my yeah authority. as soon as i did like cartman sort of preaching it was it just it was completely natural it just he just kind of does that all the time anyway and then you realize all those guys are kind of just cartman yeah basically that do that voice all those Baptists. but there was also remember the yeah there was that little kid we saw in some show that was doing that some little southern oh, yeah, kid we that we saw, saw little, like, little, Mari little. Povich or something that held a bible on the playground and did just bitch at all the kids <laughs> and he was just a little carmen he was just a little fat kid going you yeah. will be damned <laughs> it's pretty sweet <laughs> and there's sister Anne right there that's Anne Garofino she continues her brilliant role as Anne which is pretty sweet too because I don't remember if it's in this the first part or the second part but this is where we basically assert that everybody goes to hell except for Mormons that yeah. you know because if it is true that you know all, some there's only there can only be one religion that's actually right and so uh, it's the Mormons it's an episode where you also know from seeing the, in the last few episodes between Bruce doing a voice and Anne doing a voice that our utter disdain for actors so we always just get our friends and people who work on the show to do voices because every time we try to get an actor to do stuff they come in but then we call them at like two in the morning going oh we got to change the line we got to you know we, or we're gonna write a new thing and they're just like what well you've got to call my agent I'll come in tomorrow at noon and you have lunch ready for me <laughs> exactly and a lot of times suck actors, my balls too. actors <laughs> A lot of times, actors don't understand that, like, a, a lot of South Park voices are just supposed to be really normal. Oh. And a lot of voiceover actors come in, and they try to do a funny voice. This part's sweet, too, because this is where he's watching the... He turns on the gay porno. Oh, yeah. Remember, and we, like, got footage. We, we actually got some footage of a gay porno from this gay director that loves South Park. And so, uh... For, for like one night and then that one night it was week just, we had the videos there yeah but then one night me it was just me and trey and i think ann had even gone home yeah and we were editing and so trey just cut in a bunch of this gay porn right at the front of each cut so that the avid guys had to remember <laughs> yeah their editors but had we to cut it. in like full-on hardcore like close-up penetration <laughs> and like and, and we thought everyone would get a big kick out yeah, of it. Yeah, we thought everyone it was funny, and they didn't think it was And funny. our homophobic post department did not think it was funny at all. <laughs> they were bummed out on us, like seriously pissed off. I remember we were almost going to send it to Comedy Central that way. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the kind of shit that goes down all the time in the offices of South Park. But that one misfired. Yeah, yeah that one didn't work. But they couldn't get too pissed, because what were they going to do? It was us. They were the boss. They couldn't do anything. Well, I'm sorry. I, we, we really oh, went yeah, on way too long on Excuse us. Excuse us. Why don't you just go ahead and watch? We'll be back on the next episode. So this was the episode called Fourth Grade that we actually was the beginning of another season for us. And uh, we decided to kind of make fun of how shows reinvent themselves. And that's why we made that super hit introduction <laughs> where we just technoed up the song and put com slick computer graphics in it. But it was actually still just going to be the same crappy animation you've always seen. And I guess we were always right. Reporters always asked us, so like, how, how, how old are the kids now? Yeah. You know, and so it's one of those things when you do a show and you've been doing it for a few years, you're like, well, these kids aren't aging. So we yeah. thought we'd have them age to fourth grade like it was that different. Because that was such a mile. Obviously, that was the, the biggest milestone in your life as a kid was what grade you were getting into. And we thought that and we thought, you know, oh, we will sort of reinvent the show a little bit and give them a new teacher, you know, a new Mr. Garrison. And it's pretty funny because just about everything we ended up doing in this season and the season after we ended up going back on and worked through yeah. all this shit to end up getting Mr. Garrison right back. <laughs> because we just <laughs> we liked, liked him better <laughs> as, a, as a character. Because he's so much better as a character. It's so funny because, you know, it's an animated show. There's absolutely no reason why we need to say they aged at all. There's no reason they, we needed to have them move into the fourth grade. It was just something to do. <laughs> but uh, this was the first... This, so this was the introduction of the new school teacher, Miss Chokes on Dick, and her... We had a lot of arguments with the the, um, the network about, we had to say, she, we got very specific. She's like, you can do it, but you have to say, like, 
Chokes on Dick. Like, so yeah. it sounds like this Eastern European name. It was one and of we those, just went around yeah. and just said Chokes on Dick by the it end was, of it. Yeah, it was one of those typical things with the network where it was just like, the first one was such a chore. It was like, it's got to be Chokes on Dick. You know, it was like, it's got to be done like this. And by the end, we were just going, Miss Chokes on Dick. She chokes and it was on like, Dick. <laughs> by, the, by the third show, they didn't care anymore. <laughs> And also, of course, we had a lot of fights with just how much veiny nipples and breasts we were going to see in this. And well, I actually got away with quite a bit, yeah. looking back. I, yeah, I'm pretty... And it, my, actually, my favorite thing is when the cats sort of inexplicably show up. Oh, that's like, right. They're, they're just sucking on her teeth. <laughs> they just, like, want to be around. <laughs> they're just sucking on her teeth. <laughs> I like this, too, because this, this is a good solution to just get a, get a time machine and go back in time to the third grade. And I think we've mentioned it before, but the two geeks are based on um, our two uh, systems guys here because we do the whole show on computers, and they're Sean and JJ. They've been in the show. Every time we need the Star Trek dorks, they, they, come, into, yeah. they come into play. <laughs> this is great right here. I like this part. <laughs> 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 this has really become Cartman's like thing is that no matter where Cartman is, he always wants to be someplace else. Yeah. That's basically Cartman's MO through a lot of the shows. Yeah. Is he just this wasn't the way third grade was. It sucked. <laughs> but Cartman wants to be anywhere but where he is. And he <laughs> often has a song about it. Yeah. <laughs> he often has a song about the place he'd rather be. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, that's that's way plenty for this episode. Yeah, uh, we wouldn't want to bore you, so yeah, we'll move sorry. on right We're now to the next to, episode yeah. here. Yeah. And this is the episode Trapper Keeper, and this is another great example of how current events helped helped help their ass when we didn't know where the show should go. We basically had the whole Trapper story, uh, Trapper Keeper storyline, but it you know we needed a B story and we couldn't figure out what it was. But this show was we were making it right at the time of the elections, the presidential, the 2000 election, election yeah. And when that whole thing went down with um, Bush and Gore. And, you know, in Florida, the whole, you know, recount was, was still happening. And we just decided to do that in the kindergarten with, you know, basically kindergartners whining about the whole thing because that's sort of what was going on in the country at the time. <laughs> and a little girl named Flora who couldn't make up her mind, right, basically. Right, Florida. <laughs> and this is the first time we saw, you know, Garrison's basically sort of been redeemed in the last episode, so now he gets to go back and teach kindergarten. And we really had fun with the kindergarten kids because we basically had... Uh, uh, one of the producers on the show, Frank, his uh, his son Nico did the voice, and it, it it was just this cute little kid that just sort of talks like that, and was able to get all these great sort of kitty lines and and just put them into the mouths of the you know instead of adults doing the voices of kids, it was so funny to hear a little kid actually do it. And because Frank was a producer on the show, he'd let his kids say whatever we wanted. So yeah, that, that which was which was good for us. <laughs> and then um this this guy from the future here, he's. <laughs> That's um doing that voice is uh, Kyle McCullough, one of the writers on South Park, who's done he's done quite a few voices actually. Yeah, Kyle, I'm mean, Kyle used to do that all the time before this episode. Kyle <laughs> used to sort of go around and even if we were staying at a hotel for a writers retreat or whatever, he'd be like, you know, I lost the key to my human room. <laughs> I mean room <laughs> to just try to see, you know, waiting for those few people. They're like, oh my god, I think that I guy's from outer space. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we finally ended up in a show, and I remember it was it was originally a friend's trapper keeper. Remember yeah, that? I don't know if it's the I don't know if it's the way it is, but I when I was growing up, when we were growing up, Trapper Keeper was having a Trapper Keeper was fucking huge. Yeah, like people loved their Trapper Keepers and all the shit you could keep in them. I don't know if they I don't know if it's much anymore, but. <laughs> so we actually had a few kids. Uh, Frank's yeah. kid is the main the main kid with the darker hair, that, and and then we had sort of all these other kids come in and say random lines. I think it's pretty cute. That's that's the, the only thing I'm bummed out about now that we have Garrison back teaching the boys is that now we don't have the kindergarten kids anymore. Yeah, maybe we should do a kindergarten. But actually, all those kids that we use now they don't sound cute anymore. Well, we always have to we always have to find new kids. Yeah. Now they sound know. like little brats again. There's been like what three or four Ikes. Uh, I think there's been like ten Ikes probably. Yeah. One about every year because there's only a little window where a kid is actually babbling in that cute way, and then they turn into little assholes, basically. There's a really good Rosie O'Donnell joke in this episode too. That's yeah, the only thing I remember. The, oh, I know what the joke is. She's a big fat bitch. Yeah. That's the joke. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> that's pretty much the joke. And the other thing is, isn't NORAD in this episode? Doesn't it? Isn't it NORAD that he goes to? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. And NORAD is the uh, is the Cheyenne Mountain, which is where the uh, was it Northern, 
You know what it is. It's the air defense for the yeah. whole country, and it actually is just right in or right near South Park. <laughs> so we uh, we mixed fact and fact and fiction and made a whole new creation with this show. Yeah. I remember we were on Lake Powell when we came up with this episode. That's right, we're on a houseboat. Yeah, and I remember my grandma was sitting there. <laughs> drinking wine and listening to us make up a show because <laughs> we were on this houseboat in Lake Powell and <laughs> Matt and I and a couple of their friends and we basically had to come up with an episode or else we had to come back and so we we came up with this. That was probably about so, it. Oh, I'm sorry, my... Uh, wow. I'm uh, sorry we, we bored you with all that. We'll, we're going to uh, get some we'll beers. To the next show. If it doesn't have metal spikes, then hold it. So this was our Thanksgiving special and uh, called Helen Keller the Musical but... Uh, I, I remember that sort of one thing we decided to try to do was Timmy was still really popular. Um, even, you know, it had been about eight months since <laughs> Timmy was out. And for some reason, Timmy was still like the most popular character. And we decided, let's try to do an episode where even though Timmy can do nothing but say his own name, where we actually really give him a big emotional story. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's where we came up with him, you know, kind of. It's basically the Charlie Brown Christmas special where, you know, they're in charge of going out and getting the Christmas tree. So Kyle and Timmy are in charge of going out and getting a turkey. And they, Timmy, of course, is, wants to get this sort of uh, runt, you know, messed up turkey that they bring back and everyone rips on him. That shot's from The Right Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever seen the movie The Right Stuff? That shot you can use it a lot. We, everyone <laughs> sort of knows now The Right Stuff shot. We do a Right Stuff shot and then we're back into the, into the theater. <laughs> I think at the beginning of this, how... Stan, um, he's all like this because he's wearing a crepe hair beard yeah, and it hurts so bad to talk with a crepe Which we beard. really knew because we did this movie called Cannibal the Musical and, and <laughs> we had to wear crepe hair beards in it and that's what we did. Basically the whole last third of that movie we're going, saying our lines like this because we do, are like cold and we don't want to move our... Because uh, you have to put on this spirit gum all over your face and it just cracks and you're like, all right, my guys, let's go. <laughs> Stan with a crepe hair beard. <laughs> And I remember, too, there's this, uh, in this character is where we sort of have the Jean Valjean character, where uh, the, the theater it's that guy. guy from, the theater guy they bring in was based on the guy who plays Jean Valjean in Les Miserables on Broadway. And actually, sort of every place I've seen it, it's always like a guy that, for some reason, has to talk like this and say, he is only a boy. And, like, that's just sort of how he talks for some reason. <laughs> I remember we drew Gobbles. Oh, remember this? Actually, Gobbles was a dog to begin with. Yep, that's right, yeah. And we actually started the show, um, and it started animating the show where Gobbles was a little dog. I think before we decided to make it a Christ uh, Thanksgiving special. Mm -hmm. I think so. And he just found this little puppy that was kind of retarded and fell in love with it and then had to let the puppy go, and it was just too fucking sad, basically. <laughs> just wasn't Gobbles funny. being a puppy was just so cute, and it was so sad when he gets sent away. But it, that was just, that, that's, that classic scene where the, where the boy has to tell the, the, the animal to, the, you know, has to get mad at it to make it leave because, it, because you know, Timmy knows that it's the best thing for Gobbles is, is a, that was basically like, that was the scene we knew we wanted a parody and you had to write the whole thing around that because right. it's just and, such a classic. And your lead character can only say Timmy. Yeah, <laughs> you can't really say anything. Yeah, here's that yeah. theater guy character. <laughs> but uh, I also actually one of my favorite scenes in South Park's in this show where uh, the the Jean Valjean guy tells Cartman he needs to close his eyes and just try to you know oh, yeah, let right. his mind run free and they blindfold him and we see what's in Cartman's mind and it's basically like live video footage of a mouse eating another mouse's brain. brain. I think it's his brain. And <laughs> then that weird alien character that's just a freaky character. Yeah, yeah. Totally scary. This is one of those, There's we've done a few Thanksgiving specials in South Park, I think three, and this was one of the times when, uh, every time we do, I'm always with my family in Cheyenne, Wyoming, actually, because that's where Grandma is. And so, of course, the family always wants to gather around and watch South Park as part of you know Thanksgiving, because this is on the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, and uh, as as per usual, the family all sits around and basically just kind of sits there and stares at me. It's like, what the, what the, the fuck, fuck is wrong with you? The fuck is this? <laughs> I like water, hell and water. I yeah. <laughs> Once again, yeah, it was sort of delusions of grandeur going into this. You know, with one week to make this show, we're like, we'll do a whole musical about Helen Keller. Yeah. That great expectations thing. You know? Yeah. That's great. We'll so. do this. Oh, I'm sorry. We've gone on way too long. I'm sorry. Right. 
So this episode, yeah, I really can't explain this at all. This is actually probably one of the least popular episodes of South Park <laughs> that we ever produced, although I think it's really cool. All I remember is that, I mean, I know that we had the character of Pip from the very, very beginning of South Park, the very first, the pilot episode, we always, for some reason, had Pip in there. And and we we talked about doing this from the very beginning. We're like, we should just take that little Pip kid and basically just do Great Expectations South right. Park style. Mm-hmm. Which seemed like a decent enough idea, except that Great Expectations kind of sucks, and so it's like, and it's certainly well, the not end very of funny. Great Expectations really sucks. Yeah. This ending is much much better with robot monkeys because you know as soon as I, I remember you know, the first time I read Great Expectations, I was sort of expecting robot monkeys at the end, and when they didn't come, you know I decided someday we'd we'd make this. So we got um, we asked Malcolm McDowell to do this, and luckily he said yes. Mostly because we wanted to say from the very beginning of this episode, you're not going to see the bo- Cartman and Butters and everybody yeah. in this episode. Because as we learned from the Terrence and Philip episode, like don't, don't expect you know expect. <laughs> you got to you got to let your audience know you know otherwise they sit there the entire time going okay when are we going to get out of this British crap and go see Cartman fart on Kyle? Yeah, where's Cartman? So we tried. That was our kind of way of saying this is going to be an extremely different experience, and um, most people I think pretty much hated it. Yeah. But I think it's really good. It really kind of follows Great Expectations. It does pretty well, for actually. For the most part. It really, we basically just did Great Expectations right up until the very end. And it was it was fun for us and our animators just because we were doing something stylistically a little bit different. It was sort of one of our the first times we did that. But this is, yeah, one of the one of the uh, prisons of that we're in doing South Park. Is you, you, a lot of times we want to do just different like this. Like, oh, that'd be really cool to do that. But... You kind of have to figure out a way to do it with the characters you've established or people don't like it as much. Yeah. Um, it's funny, yeah. You try to do something a little different and people get angry. Yeah. <laughs> and all the <laughs> these few shows that we've done that have been like, oh, let's do a whole episode without the boys. It's all great expectations with Pip. I mean, it takes, you know, the production staff twice as much work to do. And everyone just hates it. Yeah. So I don't know if we're going to do it I much anymore. I don't know anymore. if we're going to do that again. Actually, as we're doing this commentary right now, we're making a show with where the boys turn into anime characters. Yeah. And it's sort of the same thing. Like, you're kind of... As, as cool as it is, I think a lot of the audience is just going to be like, I don't care about these characters. I want to see the boys. I want to see my boys. So... That's right there. This guy, the uh, blacksmith guy, that's uh, that's Kyle McCullough doing that voice yeah. again. I think Kyle did a lot of these because he can do British voices. He can do really good British voices because he grew up in Canada watching a bunch of British TV. But didn't we also have... Uh, Oh, no. I, I remember that we, this was the show, in every run of South Park, we, we do one show that we call, you know, we bank it, basically, where, because every show we do on the fly, we do it the week it airs, and that's when we make it and write it and everything, but then sort of right around this time or a little before, we had gotten in the habit of trying to at least half start one episode, so that in the middle of a run, which is about two months long, we could take at least two days off three days off and because we had one show kind of started and then we have to come back and finish it really quick and for some stupid ass reason we made it this episode which was like so complicated and so you know a whole different uh, style that we went away and we i remember it because for thanksgiving we went away that's right so we yeah. could be with our families and then we came back on sunday going okay we got to finish this great expectations in two days and uh that's pretty much why you get robot monkeys at the end yeah that's why you get robot monkeys <laughs> i remember the greatest part about hanging out with malcolm is you could hear old stories about stanley kubrick in Clockwork Orange, yeah, and he's a really cool guy. So, um, but really, I mean, it's like we we were trying. It was like it's 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 really like we were sitting there doing this joke. But this really is pretty much Great Expectations. That's what she does. She this little girl takes him up and is just insulting him the entire mm-hmm. time, and he just takes it like a bitch. And uh, you know, we were kind of going back and forth. Well, I guess should we try to start making it really funny and weird? And it's like, no, let's just stick to it and do Great Expectations. Fuck it <laughs> <laughs> until the very end. So that's what you get. So that's why. This is what it is. Probably Charles Dickens' writing credit on this. Yeah, we should have probably. <laughs> but uh, but that's, that's that. That's plenty about that episode. Sorry about that. And I have a fancy I should like to see someone play. So this is our episode we call Fat Camp. And uh, I, I don't remember a whole lot about this episode, except that um, it was really funny. <laughs> um, well, I remember that the... Uh, the idea that I mean the original idea was that Cartman goes to fat camp obviously and that just that Cartman is the one guy that would figure out how to profit on I mean obviously Cartman is supposed to be troubled by his weight but he's not but he goes to Car- he goes to fat camp and he's like the one guy who's cruel enough to even profit off other fat people yeah and um, so he sh- 
That's what I remember. I remember him. I remember the little fat kid crying and <laughs> and Cartman giving him the, can- the yeah. candy bar. That's one of my favorite scenes. That's a great scene. But <laughs> I and then we the B story in this was basically Kenny will do any with anything for money and um, it was because it was right about the time that that Tom Green and Jackass and all those shows were so so popular and um, it was just sort of basically off of off of that of like you know Kenny becoming a little jackass character where it's like you know all right if I eat a spleen if, it, if that'll get me on TV and make me money I'll do it well because everyone had like I there was a poor kid who lives on my block and his name was Stony and his real name was Stony actually that's funny. <laughs> and uh, Stoney would eat worms if he gave him a dollar. So everyone knew that poor kid that would do anything for money because they actually were so poor. He just farted him against the wall. <laughs> that was sweet. But uh, I remember we had we had a fat... This was another one of those ideas where we always knew Cartman needed to go to fat camp, like a fat camp show. Because we always saw those fat camp shows on Oprah and stuff like that when yeah. we sent the kids there. And we, we had just never quite figured it out. I also remember the end of this show. I think... The end of this show, still to this day, is one of the most disgusting things we've ever done on the show. Where yeah. Kenny crawls up into um, Miss Crabtree's vagina to like live it, live up in her uterus for some time. Yes. And he ends up dying up there. So the sort of the last shot of it is basically just her pushing a dead boy out of her out of her cooch, out of her womb. And that was the big thing: was could we do we call it cooch or coos? And I can't remember which one it ended up being, but Comedy Central wouldn't let us say one, but the other was okay. And Comedy Central standards always kind of had a problem with stinky coos or smelly vagina. Any kind of smelly vagina jokes, they just really weren't into. Yeah, I don't know why. Well, you can figure it out. Yeah, though. so you can figure out what was going on there. <laughs> what right, were, I what remember too. It was pretty of. funny though because we had the shot and it was really just even for us it just grossed us out because it's just she pushes out and Kenny just comes, you know, just slugging dead body out of her vagina and. And so Kami's just like, well, okay, you can do that, but you have to put a little curtain up in front of her vagina. So just like right where her vagina is, there's just like a little curtain. So you see everything else. You see the dead boy hit the floor and all you that. You know what's going on. Boy, it is, it is gross. Oh, I'm already uh, sleepy. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You, yeah. you almost be super sleepy out there. We'll stop right now. Sorry about that, everybody. This is Wacky Molestation Adventure. And unlike so many of the other shows, this show actually does have a really interesting story with it. Um, uh, that we can tell <laughs> because this was like later in the season so of course it was all being done on the fly um, hadn't you know had to think of it all the week it aired but um, we it was all going along fine and we kind of had the idea that the boys kind of like a children of the corn take over the town because all their parents have been sent away and the idea was you know Cartman's kind of got one side of the town and Stan and Kyle have the others and they're kind of at war and uh we just, you know, we kind of knew where it was headed, and by about Saturday, we were really stuck and just like, oh, man, where does this go? Carmen has to get the boys. Yeah, and we suddenly finally had a sweet, sweet idea, which was that Cartman, is, his whole plan is to just build a giant shield to, like, block the sun out from the other side of town. Like, he's going to block the sun. From Smiley Town, I think from, it was. Yeah, block the sm- sun out of Smiley Town. And we just thought that was sweet, and that was so Carmen. And we were laughing about it, and we kind of figured out how it was all going to happen. All weekend. All weekend, I remember, yeah. I was on Cloud Nine. I thought that was going to be the coolest I, end to a I show. I think it was, like, Sunday. It was either Sunday or even Monday that one of the writers, Kyle, was basically, you know, because we just all sit around and talk about the show, and we're like, yeah, and then it could be this, and it'll be that, and he's like, well, yeah, but you should just do it the same way The Simpsons did it. And we're like, what? And he goes, you know, when The Simpsons had, uh, what's his name? Yeah, the, uh, Mr. Burns. Yeah, Mr. Burns go- block out the sun from <laughs> Springfield, and we were just like, g- what? And uh, we're like, uh, why the hell, The Simpsons did that? And that that's always a thing in our writers' meetings, like a lot of times when we come up with sweet ideas, someone will go, oh, The Simpsons already did it, and we just get so pissed off. <laughs> the Simpsons had, are... Like 300 shows. They've yeah. done so many things, and it's hard not to do. Yeah. And they've done so many things well. It's so hard to stay away off that territory. <laughs> so but that was, was one where we were so excited. For, we thought it was the best end to a well, show. Well, not only that, but it had us, you know, basically we were down to the wire now, and that was the crux of the whole rest of the show. We were just like, what the fuck do we do now? And so that's what we came up with, the whole John Elway statue thing that yeah. happens in the end, and the Star Trek speech, which actually turned out pretty sweet, too. I like the Star Trek so speech. blocking out the sun. If the Simpsons had done it, that would have yeah. been great, too. But And, and that actually was... The, this was the episode that then made us. I don't know. I don't know how much later we did it, but we ended up doing a show called Simpsons Did It, where basically <laughs> uh, Butters is being tormented by all the sweet ideas he's having. The Simpsons already did it, and, and that's exactly how we feel. That's exactly how we time. feel a lot. Sucks playing second fiddle. Yeah, I remember this was also like it was like yeah the Children of the Corn and like uh, Road Warrior. 
yeah, that three, thing when they, the yeah. Mad Max are with kids that live on their own. And then there was also this movie called King of Hearts that I saw oh, one yeah. time about the uh, insane asylum is let out. The rest of the town is, is you know, the, basically the lunatics are let out of the asylum and there's no one, no one else, nobody else there. Yeah. So it was like those kind of movies that I was inspired by. But it was just sweet cool. because basically we say it's been like a week or something. And yeah. <laughs> like and they just totally formed their own little. Jade. Oh, there's a Star Trek too. Little kids. Yeah. Little yeah. Kid planet too. Oh yeah, yeah. That's right. The little kid planet. Yeah. yeah. Mir- Miri. So there's always like you know kid society things where they there weren't any adults around. It's a pretty cool idea. Yeah. So, See, is there anything else interesting about this show? Um, um, and then mm-hmm. molested. They go to jail and they teach him. That's a pretty not yeah bad on. scene where they're trying to tell him not to be turned on by the little boy. Um, and then the space thing. So he's dressed up like a space suit. Because we we also, the we also I remember we entertained starting the whole episode, just with the people random people driving. Oh, that's right. And starting the whole episode just cold. You'd come in on the t- people driving, and you you would flash back to how the boys got in this thing. But then yeah. we kind of came up with a molested molested idea. Well, I think we we figured out yeah that that's how. We, but I remember actually for a few days the show did start that way, and, and this stuff we're seeing right now was all flashback. But then the more we watched it on the avid we just kind of like you know it's it's tough to you follow. lose a lot of jokes yeah because people don't know what the hell's going on yeah because people you know it's a, it's tough with comedy when everyone's trying to figure out what's going on they're not really laughing that much <laughs> <laughs> so uh so that's anyway the, that's yeah, that that's that show we'll there see you on the next one so this what what do we call this episode something when, christmas oh very crappy Christmas. oh that's clever because it's about uh <laughs> mr hanky and his family this i think this is like the Fourth Mr. Hanky show we did, wasn't it? Uh, third or yeah, fourth. because we did the film, the original yeah. one, the film festival one, and then the Christmas song, classics. Yeah. Was that before? Afterwards? And this was like every, you know, every time Christmas rolls around, we're kind of like, oh, let's not do another Christmas special because we can't top the last one we did. And um, but actually, the last two we did have been really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but uh, I actually really like this first little scene just because it's a very simple, cute little uh, scene between Carl and his brother. That's very. Uh, but this this uh, this episode is where we decided to use the spirit of Christmas, which was the original South Park thing that we did way back, way 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 back, um, and then use it as a reference it and kind of make this whole, I guess I don't know what you call it, reflective thing where the boys are making their own cartoon. Yeah, where it's basically the boys doing our story of making the spirit of Christmas, <laughs> and sort of we're trying to get across just how fucking lame it was to make that, just how like. Fucking hard it was with Horrible. construction paper cutouts to make that shit. It was. But just, instead of doing it for like twelve hundred dollars or whatever we did it for, six hundred dollars, they're doing it for to save Christmas. Yeah, this is funny right here. Yeah, <laughs> little cockroach. That's why I really like this scene just because it keeps kind of going on and nothing really happens. <laughs> but uh, he's very Christmassy. I know too that this is this is the first time we meet the Nuggets, which are yeah. Mr. Hanky's kids. Cornwallis. Cornwallis. And Amber. And this has uh, the, yeah, the, uh, the Lion King Pooh song about oh, yeah. uh, the circle of Pooh. That, in the same way you can do a whole circle of life, Pooh has its own kind it of It really, circle. actually, you know, at first it was kind of a joke, but then we realized it really wasn't at all. It, uh, if you follow the song, it totally makes sense. <laughs> but, um, but it also has this reference of this song from um, one of my favorite Christmas cartoons called Twas the Night Before Christmas, which is the one with those little mice that run around and save the clock and save, save Christmas. And, uh, right. There's a song in that that I always like that song. You wait and I'll whittle you mm-hmm. something and I'll try. And uh, it was very last minute we threw it into the episode, but also because this was the last episode of the run and we always end up being really tired and doing stupid things in the last episode of the run, we we decided it made perfect sense that while Ken, you know, Kyle's singing that song, at some point, inexplicably, his face changes into one of the, yeah. from the characters of that show. And everyone is just like, what the fuck happens to his face there? And even me now, when I see it, I'm like, what the fuck did we do that for? But uh, <laughs> but then I remember it's just because that's how those those people look. That was a really stupid joke. Basically, nobody got but me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Bruce. Bruce got it, too. Uh, and uh, this yeah. is Mr. Hanky with his alcoholic wife. Oh, yeah, that's right. And then what else happened in this episode? Yeah. I remember when they're trying to spread Christmas joy and there's the homeless guy and Amber says he looks sad and she he's sleeping and she goes over and like s- puts oh, her yeah. poo on him and makes it, gives him a smiley face and she's like there and he's like that looks Christmassy now <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty sweet <laughs> and that's um, Am- Amber's the voice of Pam Brady who uh, is on our writing staff and wrote the movie with us and stuff so that was a good time and it's Cornwallis 
Simon. Oh, that's Simon. Simon. Simon Cornwallis is the regular one, not the retarded one. I love, too, that now it's late enough in South Park. You know, we've had enough shows and everything. The boys can just stand in shit, and it's all right. Like, you know, now that <laughs> they, don't they think care. nothing of standing in shit now because they've just done it so many times looking for Mr. Hankey. There you go. But, uh, it's a skill set. Yeah, so we actually show clips in this from Spirit of Christmas. But the funny thing is you'll, you'll notice for the very astute viewer that we we had to choose certain scenes, and those certain scenes we had to we had to basically put a big score over, because nothing in the spirit of Christmas, the music was cleared. Yeah, we didn't clear any of it. We just I, ripped I, you know stuff what was off funny CDs, was too, so we was couldn't the way use that that any part we, with the. It music. was sort of the first time we had went back and looked at the spirit of Christmas, and we looked and noticed. I noticed just how much Cartman's voice had changed. You know, it all really of their like, voices. Yeah, but yeah. Cartman's especially. But it was really just like, <laughs> it was like really like that, and so we're like. But it was fun because we just worked it into the show, like trying to explain it, which was that Cartman gets fired and he is not allowed to do it, and then Stan has to do his voice. Yeah. That, that's why he sounds all different. <laughs> yep. So, um, but anyway, we certainly want to appreciate you uh, listening to our commentaries on this uh, on this collection, and uh, we hope that that you like it. But and more so, we hope that you'll uh, go out and buy season. What was it? Five. The, what's the next one coming out? Four. What is? Oh, what is this? Next one's five. This five. is four. Next one's gonna be five. And I have to say, in all honesty, five is when shit starts getting really good. I mean, <laughs> it really is. I think that that's what, actually that might be our best run was, was sort of what it was on that next CD. Yeah, so. the season five is the best one. And that's why on the next one we're actually going to do commentary, not fun size like we're doing now. We're going to do uh, mini size, which is exactly ten seconds longer than fun size. Ten yeah. percent. We'll more give you bite we'll size than we did on the second one because the second ones we don't even like that. It's like a Kit Kat with ten uh, percent more. Yeah. So um, thank you very much and Merry Christmas.